This is TALK News Live, the news channel that brings you the news. Good evening, I'm news anchor Ruben Riggs. A guilty verdict has been reached in the case against TALK's very own news anchor Coco O'Hearn. Last night, Coco's wife Phoebe O'Hearn accused him of being, quote, a little mean to her in her dream last night. After a record three minutes of deliberation, the jury agreed. Coco was sentenced to about 15 minutes of cold shoulder and about a week of repeat reminders of what he did. Here's what Coco had to say after his conviction. All I can really say is, welcome strangers to Talkumentary, a show where we watch documentaries and then get together and talk about it. Welcome everyone to the 47th episode of Talkumentary. Tonight, we have all blacked out and been coerced into thinking that we have a podcast and we want to talk about a documentary. <laughs> I have with t- me today only one crew member, the trusty, the, the, the rusty but trusty. <laughs> That's me. My sister. Ruben Riggs. My sister, Lauren, a.k.a. news anchor Ruben Riggs. Hi, sister. Hey, what's going on? It's just, it's just us today. It's just, just the two of us. Mm. We can make it if we <laughs> We can like harmonize. I'll go low. No. No, you go low. I'll go high. <laughs> we can make it if we try. I don't know. This is the worst. Before we go any fucking further into this stupid show, <laughs> uh, let's get a few things out of the way. Go out, rate and review our podcast on your favorite streaming service. Let us know what you think of our show. If you think we're annoying and you just hate hearing us, but that's not true. You all like this, right? Right. <laughs> if you want to connect with our crew, look for at documentary podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and and YouTube, or shoot us an email at info at gmail dot com. That's right, Ruben. Thank you. Info dot documentary at gmail dot com. Gmail. All righty then. This week we've gotten back into the world of true crime. It feels like it's been a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, more specifically, though, we got into the terrible horrors that can occur in the criminal justice system at the hands of greedy and loathsome people, monsters, monsters. Uh, who care more about a win and their reputation than they do about people and the truth. We followed the story of Ryan Ferguson and his family after 17-year-old Ryan was convicted of a murder he did not and could not have committed. Based on somebody else's dream. I cannot yeah. even. <laughs> we watched the one hour and 46 minute documentary from 2015 called Dream Killer or Dream Slash Killer. Yes. I wonder how you're supposed to like say that. I don't know. I wonder how Andrew I bet Jenks just, would have said it. I bet he would have just said Dream Killer. Probably. Maybe it's one word. Dream, dream Killer. killer. Dream Killer. Dream killer. Or maybe it's like Kilier, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dream Kilier. Here's the trailer. <laughs> All right, 911. Uh huh. You know, the reporter at the Tribune that was murdered. I- Can I pause for a second? Mm-hmm. If I call 911 and I say 911 Hi. and they go, 911. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is up? me. Here I am. What do you want? Sorry, I'm gonna hang here we up go. And call back. <laughs> Hopefully, I get the, the get, other guy. G- give me a different operator, please. You know I what happened, and I know the murderer. Without warning, Ryan Ferguson strangled the victim to death. No, he didn't. I'm not involved in this in any way. He had his foot on the victim's back, and he was pulling up on the belt. I didn't know what I'd done that night. If it was memory or a dream. Hello. This is Brian, sir. An inmate at the Boone County Jail. Oh, my God. How you doing? As time went on, I realized that I needed to become proactive. Some people say, oh, my gosh, he's kind of gone around the bend. He'll never be okay until Ryan's out. One day, one person said, I have some information I'd like to share with you. 100% that was not Ryan Ferguson. He is not the guy. 
there's seven unidentified prints and it excludes them, most places never would have pursued the case. It's all about winning. So protecting the verdict at any cost. I know that a lot of people think, oh, this could never happen to me. Trust me, this could happen to you. They can take your freedom. They can take you and put you in a cell with nothing. And they can't take my mind, they can't take my body, no matter what. Thank you for using Evercom. That was a song by Portugal the Man. Did you know that? No, I did not. Yep. Nice. Um, it's at the end of that uh, trailer. Anyway, this is one of the few documentaries that we've watched that had my attention from the very beginning to the very end. Yep. Um, a lot of what we watch, I feel like the point gets across within the first hour. Mm -hmm. And then the last, you know, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, whatever it is, I'm kind of going, okay. All right, wrap it up. Let's let's figure yeah. out where we're going here. <laughs> right. Um, but this one didn't feel like it dragged on. I needed every bit of this to get through. And, you know, what did you think about this one? I really liked this one. This was way more up my alley than most of the ones that we've right. that I've been on, you the know, that I've true watched. True crime stuff. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Couple words. If someone said you have two words to describe dream killer, is it so dream funny and that, killer? Yeah. Well, it's so funny that you said that because when my fiance got home, I was watching it last night and when my fiance got home, What's up, he Zach? was like, <laughs> he was like, okay, you have one sentence to tell me what this is about. <laughs> <laughs> I got to figure out if I'm going to watch it with you or not. And I was like, dream killer. I, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how else are you going to say Like I, I was trying to come up with something. Yeah. But I was like, basically kid dreams something. Somebody else gets convicted. And he's like, all right, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> not doing it. Uh, this was directed by Andrew Jenks. Produced by Andrew Jenks, Dylan Radigan, and Dale Rosenblum. Distributed by Netflix, but it wasn't on Netflix when we watched it. We had to rent this one. Uh, I rented it on iTunes. It was only 99 cents on iTunes That's for what I did a too. couple days, so mm -hmm. not bad. Um, Dream Killer does not have enough reviews to register on Rotten Tomatoes' tomato meter, but it has an audience score of 82% with over 100 ratings, so that's pretty good. Here's a few of those critics... So there was four critics reviews, so that's not enough to get a tomato. Wow. Tomato meter. That was a weird that sound. That was really weak. <laughs> um, but there was four reviews, so I, I grabbed two of them, the critic reviews. A fresh review from Maria Voltaggio mm. of International Business Times says, quote, a powerful, disturbing look into the American judicial system. That's it. Okay. Uh, and then, our, yeah, what, you get paid for that, I'll bet. Fresh. Yeah, fresh. <laughs> and a rotten review from Robert Abel, spelled like Adele but with a B, Ugh. Abeli, <laughs> of the Los Angeles Times says, quote, tonally, the film is a mess, unable to decide if it's a damning downer or the inspiring story of conquering injustice. Which one of those two reviews do you align more with, sister? Oh my gosh, the first one, I guess. A if powerful, I have disturbing to look into the American judicial system. If I have system? to choose one, yeah. Are you are you at all like thrown off by the fact that I keep saying judicial system? No. Instead of judicial. No, I would expect that from you. A judicial. A judicial. <laughs> I can't even say the word. <laughs> yeah, a judicial. A judicial. A judicial. Anyway, we're going to have all the credit information in the show notes. Show Let's get notes. into it. Uh, this one could probably be spoiled. Yes. So you should go watch this first, or hopefully you maybe watched it after you heard which one we were covering this week. So here's your spoiler alert. Let's talk about why we chose to watch Dream Slash Killer for tonight's episode. This one was actually recommended by producer guy DJ. He met Andrew Jenks, the director of this film, when they were working together on a, a photo shoot or a video or something like that. DJ does all that stuff for his day job as well. Um, and Jenks mentioned his documentary when they were talking about our show. So we decided to check it out. I'm glad we did. That's I really cool. like this one. Yeah. Um, had you heard of this? I before? feel like I had, um, yeah. but I didn't. I It was not spoiled for me. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Um, truthfully, when I hadn't heard of this one, but 
I thought this was going to be more about the dream than mm -hmm. it was. Yeah. Uh, this was still a very good documentary, but this is kind of a classic example of what we've seen a few times during the run of our show where you kind of get misled just a mm -hmm. little bit by the trailer and by the, uh, the title. Mm -hmm. Now I don't, I'm not saying there's necessarily anything wrong with how they did it, but there wasn't a lot about, it, it wasn't really a dream that Chuck Erickson had. Right. It was more just like thinking he remembered something of importance and then, uh, you know, then being coerced into thinking, Mm -hmm. you know, into, into filling in those blanks. It wasn't as much of a, I went to sleep. I had a dream that I killed someone with Ryan and woke up and woke somebody up was and, dead. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's kind of what I thought was that, right. you know, he was going to wake up from this dream and turn mm -hmm. on the news and like, Oh, oh shit. shit. What it did was I real. do? <laughs> yeah. Yep. <clears throat> uh, but it was, you know, more about the cruel and unjust things that some, some people in the criminal justice system are able to get away with, mm -hmm. you know, and how absolutely terrifying it is, possibly more terrifying than, you know, a slasher killer out on the streets, oh, you know, definitely. because this is something that's really happening. And, and these are people that are very protected. Um, so a, a few details about the, the, the story and the film in 2005, 20 year old Ryan Ferguson, who was convicted, who was arrested when he was 17, was convicted and sentenced to 40 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. Dream Killer is the story of how his father, Bill, embarked on a 10 year campaign to prove Ryan's innocence. The film is chock full of incredible characters from the questionable district attorney, who is now a judge uh, named Kevin Crane. And the dream murderer himself, Chuck Erickson, to the high-powered Chicago attorney, uh, Kathleen Zellner. I the, love her. <laughs> this doctor picks both a highly flawed injustice or injustice system. Yeah, I guess I could say that. Uh, <laughs> as well as one that can work brilliantly when the right people are involved. So this is one of those films. We've done this a few times on our show, but I think it will work better if we work through the details along the timeline. Mm -hmm. So instead of jumping around a little bit like we do sometimes, I think let's kind of stick to the timeline. You good with that? Yep. All right. Let's start with Halloween of 2001. Mm -hmm. That was the day that the reporter from the Tribune news station, I don't think I ever wrote in my notes where in the world this was. Was this Missouri? Yes. Okay. Yes. Glad I remembered that right. So somewhere in Missouri, the Tribune news station, Kent Heitholt, gets murdered, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. Basically are, in like a parking lot, right? Of the Tribune, right. yeah. Yeah. There's a few eyewitnesses, some fingerprints, a bunch of evidence, but no arrests are made and no leads. Fast forward two years, a guy named Chuck Erickson calls 911, like you heard on the on the trailer just a few seconds ago, minutes ago, and he says, not only does he know what happened, but he knows who killed Kent Heithold. Um, he says that along with his friend Ryan Fer that he, along with Ryan Ferguson, who was his friend, robbed, assaulted, and then murdered Heithold in the parking lot of the Tribune two years earlier. Well, of course, this grabs the attention of every detective that's been out there with this cold case on their board. Mm -hmm. And um, he says, I don't remember much. A lot of it was a blur to Chuck. Um, well, they were wasted too. They were like, right, right, super drunk. They were trying to get money to get more alcohol, which yeah. obviously they probably didn't need, right? Um, uh, but they were trying to keep partying, and well, that's which he, is why well, that's what he said they were doing, right? But I don't think we ever know that they no, actually were think, even doing that at all, right? Yeah, um, but he says so, he doesn't remember much, it was mostly a blur, but he knows it was Ryan's idea. He knows that Ryan was the one who strangled Heithold to, de to death with a t-shirt. Or was it a bungee cord? Or, or was it a belt? Yeah, that's it. A belt. <laughs> right. So I, That was so frustrating Right. To me. So th that's part of the interrogation that mm -hmm. was happening. Uh, he's like, you know, he strangled him. He's like, what are you strangling him with? I don't know. I think it was like a t-shirt or something. And he says, 
Oh, uh, well, I'm 100% sure it wasn't a t shirt. Yeah. So, what else could it be? I'm yeah. like, oh Maybe my God. Maybe a bungee. Eventually, you're going to get to a belt. And he's like, we know it was a belt. Oh, that's yeah, probably that's right. That's probably it. <laughs> Come on. Jesus. The police pick up Chuck and Ryan, let the games begin. Mm-hmm. Um, how, go back to being 17 and imagine, you know, so. When you were 17, you had your little light blue-ish Honda Civic, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you're driving and a police car is following you, right? Mm-hmm. And they pull you over and they say, get in the car because you're under arrest for the murder of somebody. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling? Oh, scared out of my mind. Yeah. Completely scared out of my mind. And I'm probably asking to talk to my mom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Or call somebody. Right. You know... I was thinking about that, and I'm going. I'm a little impressed by Ryan's response. Yeah, a- as a 17 year old kid, not just going, "Oh, oh fuck!" Like, he- he's what? just like, "I don't, I don't know, know what you're talking, you're talking about. about. I don't even I didn't know kill who." Any- or I didn't do anything. Yeah, so I-, I don't know why you would be taking me in. Right, and he even said in one of his interviews, like, "Well, I, I, I was just going along with it because I." I figured I don't really have anything to worry about because I didn't do anything. Sure. So why would this turn into what it turned into? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's more like, oh, you must think I'm someone I'm not. We're going to get this all it's cleared up. It's going to straighten itself out and right. then I'm going to go home. And then I'm going to go home. Right. And he's almost kind of nonchalant, you know. Really um, calm, honestly, because I'd be freaking out. I feel like I would be too. Even now, I think I would. Right. And and even now, regardless of innocence or anything, I'm not saying any words. Yes. <laughs> Call no a words. lawyer. Yeah, like I need like, a lawyer. I don't care. You just told me I have the remi- right to ma- remain silent. And I have light. Oh, my God. I have a right to <laughs> an, an attorney. attorney. Right. A lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got one word uh, for you. Don't even ask me one question. Hello, lawyer. Lawyer, please. Thank you. I feel like I feel like call Kathleen Zellner immediately. Right. <laughs> I feel like I if if I could remain like as calm as I am now in uh-huh. the interrogation room, I'd be like they'd ask me like, so where were you that night? You know, I th- think I want my lawyer. Like I, I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'd play them. I like think like, I'm pretty sure. You know, I feel like probably I was asking for a lawyer. Right, and that you should just <laughs> not ask me any more questions. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Um. So Ryan's in these interrogation rooms just going, I don't know what you're fucking talking about. I I literally don't know who this guy is. I don't know anything about it. Meanwhile, Chuck's in the other room being spoon-fed a bunch of this information. Right. So again, he's out of his mind kind of. He's going, everything's a blur, but I know that we did it. Mm-hmm. I know that's what happened. And I wonder what prompted him to call and tell them that. That's the whole thing about this story I just that I just don't, don't understand. understand it. I don't get it. Right. I uh, don't understand what he, what could have motivated him to, I mean, I get it, his, I guess, if you really thought that they did it, but geez. But his explanations were just like, <clears throat> I was just getting like, this feels like an important thing. Mm-hmm. Well, then he sees the the two-year reunion thing on, on the news and he mm-hmm. goes, that must be what I'm feeling. That's what must be what, like, yeah. of all the things for you to attribute these weird feelings to- Mm-hmm. You jump to, I must have been involved in murdering, and that guy is too. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, dude. Yeah. Why <laughs> are you bringing bring me, me into, into your this? fucking shit? Um, and meanwhile, Chuck's in the other room telling details about this murder and admitting to everything that happened. And he's pushing Ryan directly under the proverbial bus, you right. know. Yeah. And and Ryan's over there maintaining his innocence. He's saying, "I don't know what to fucking tell you because I've told you a hundred times already." Well, and who, I didn't do it. Which one of them did the interrogator say tell to adjust their attitude? I about fell out of my chair when he said, "Oh, that. Was yeah, that, I think it was I, to I, I think it was to Ryan." Yeah, yeah, he's like, you know, he just said, he goes, "Okay, well, I'm going to tell you this right now. This isn't going to work. You need to adjust your attitude." And I'm going, "I wouldn't be adjusting any kind of attitude if I was innocent." Lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Exactly. Like, hold on a second. Adjust my can't. attitude. Here's my attitude. My attitude, my attitude is, is I'm sitting I didn't here talking do to you. Anything. Right. <laughs> you picked me up. Yeah. I'm sitting here talking to you, telling you what you're asking me. Right. And telling you the truth. And you're telling me to adjust my attitude because you don't like what I'm saying. Right. 
that part of it, like I know when we, I, I think when mm-hmm. we did the Halloween episode. Cropsy. Yeah. Yep. I think I talked about how, I can't remember if I talked about this on mm-hmm. here, if it was somewhere else. But anyway, the, the whole idea of being gaslit mm-hmm. like that oh, is scarier horrible. to me than yep. anything in the whole world. Honestly, yeah. and, and I, I actually, hate that feeling. I actually think, I want to talk about that in a little bit when we get mm-hmm. to another part, because- yeah. I'm curious to talk about how we feel. Could you be? I mean, we see it all the time. We watch. Mm-hmm. We did it in the Central Park Five. This is almost the same interrogation right. tactics that they used on kids who couldn't have committed that murder mm-hmm. to get them to admit to a murder. Mm-hmm. Well, it's. Do you want to get out of here? Right. Do you want to? You know, the, it's the same kind of things. You know. So we'll get into that a little mm-hmm. bit more. Um, for some fucking reason, when Ryan goes off to jail to await trial and they ask them about bail, for some reason, the bail is set at $20 million for, a for, child. for this kid, this child, who you don't have any physical evidence against. You have a, a witness who's putting him in that spot, but you don't have a confession. You don't have evidence. You don't have fingerprints. You don't have DNA. You don't have a, a photograph or a street camera view. Nothing. And you set the highest bail that's ever been set at that time. For anyone in the United States. Ever. Until, I mean, after then, there's been more. I actually looked it up. The top yeah. one now is $3 billion. Who was that? Uh, a guy named... I was going to write it down, but I didn't. It was somebody who had a $1 billion or $2 billion bail and he got out. So he was a rich boy Whoa. and, and then he went and tampered with evidence or something. So they caught him again and put him in for $3 billion. Oh my God. Yeah. I don't remember what the guy's name was, but anyway, hmm. I can't, I couldn't figure out why they would have done that. I don't know. either. It must've been to prove a point, right? Like it was just kind of like, Oh, Mm, you think you want bail? Like, I don't get that. I don't understand it either. I wrote that down too. I was like, this is a kid. There's nothing. He, he hasn't, it's not like he's been in trouble a bunch of times before. This is, Mm -mm. it's a seven. Well, at this point it's a little, it's later than that. So he's like 20, right? Well, at the time when he got arrested and they did this. March 10th, 2004 was when that interrogation was happening. Um, I thought that was, because he got arrested in 2001, right? No. I don't know. I think no, it was 2004. 2004. In 2004. Yeah. Yes. So it doesn't matter. Either way, he's still yeah. a young adult with right. no prior right. anything. Right. He's just been a you know a good kid who likes to hang out with his family yeah, is who, what it sounded like. I mean, was, and that could have been skewed too. I don't know. but Yeah. But either way, I mean- it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Because <laughs> yeah, you're you're just a, an innocent kid. He's not kid. a troublemaker. No. It's not like... And even if he and was... And there's no evidence to tamper with. Right. So what <laughs> what is he going to do? Skip town? He's right. a kid. Right. So anyway, Ryan and, and his family basically, they, they, they don't have any choice but to let Ryan go to jail. You don't have $20 million to post no. bail. And, and in all reality, if you're sitting there considering going to a bail bondsman or something like that... I don't even know if they go that high with bail, but even if you did, you're like, okay, but Ryan's innocent, right? So we're going to do what we can to make sure that he gets out of this. You know, right. a lot of people, including myself, doesn't don't realize it can be years from your arrest to your trial. Right. That to me is insane. You're we have a right to a speedy trial. Mm-hmm. That's. And in our five years is not speedy. No, no. Sitting in jail with an unattainable bail amount. Right. That's not a speedy trial, no, no matter who you are. No. And But I guess that's just one more issue with the, the justice system that mm-hmm. we uh, are, are dealing with. Um, but Bill, his hero of a father, <laughs> yes. he's not satisfied with doing nothing. So he starts getting into the weeds. Um, he's getting boxes of evidence from the police, which he says... If you're the victim or the victim's, uh, you know, representation, Mm -hmm. you have a right to all of the evidence to go through it however you want and all that, which is kind of crazy to me. I didn't know that if you were, 
if you or your direct, you know, I don't know how, what the relationship needs to be, but you have a right to go pick up the boxes of evidence from the police. I just go through everything. Right. Mm-hmm. So he does that and his dad becomes a little super sleuth, right? Mm-hmm. He's considering everything at this point, um, all while he's talking to his son who's behind bars. Tell me what you feel like it would have been like for you as, like if to watch like me go to jail or something for something like that. Yeah. You know, especially if you knew mm-hmm. there, I, I put myself on that other side and I can't even tell you how like helpless you oh, must yeah. feel and how. Yeah. Cause there's nothing you can do. Well, yeah. You're sitting there going, no, 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 no. Judge. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Over here. Yeah. You must not understand what's happening here. He's innocent. Like, yeah. Right. Well, I don't believe he yeah, is. Yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs> what? No, this can't be real. Right. I'm sitting there watching, uh, when I was watching this, going, watching his mom and his, mm-hmm. I, I think it was his sister and his dad, you know, for sure, just sitting there with like eyes wide, like, did- Like, this can't be happening right, right. now. This isn't real. This is something that we figured is going to be done after today because there's no way anyone's going to think that this really happened. Right. I, I know. I know oh it's insane. God. It's got to be the most helpless feeling, but it also has to be the most like infuriating because you can't tell anybody how you feel. You're not in the you're not the judge or the Mm-mm. jury, so your voice doesn't count. No. You don't get a vote. You a vote. You don't, you get, don't a get a vote. You don't get to vote your opinion. <laughs> you don't get a vote. No. You don't get to say what you think. No. Imagine it was your son. Right. I. I, I mean. I, I don't know. I, I can't, but how do you not I would burn like the, to believe, How do you not burn the building down? Right. I would <laughs> like to believe that I would handle it the way that his dad did and do everything in my power to I get whoever so. I needed to get involved to and not just say, oh, well, I guess you were in the wrong place at the wrong time. You're just going to have to wait it out. I, I don't think that I would ever be able to sit and say, well, we did what we could and now, right. and I mean, now we just hope. But I don't know that I would even have the the uh, the knowledge or the 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 know how or the I I don't know really what word I'm looking for, but mm-hmm. to go out and find this stuff, right? Like somehow Bill Ferguson mm-hmm. goes. I, I'm going to keep asking questions and keep knocking on doors, and you know he even said like. I'm fortunate enough to be a, a real estate agent, so yeah. I have plenty of flexibility in my schedule to go do these things and be there for Ryan. And, you know, mm-hmm. thank God he did. Right. <laughs> because right. he was able to essentially, well, well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um. So four years after the incident, Ryan is now 20 years old and he's spent 18 months or so in jail mm-hmm. and he finally gets to go to trial. This would have to... To almost be a relief at that point, mm-hmm. right? You're going finally. Well, finally, I'm gonna get me in front of a judge so that they can see that right. I'm innocent and they can let me go home. Yep. You know that there's no physical evidence. Mm-hmm. I was not there. They even said that yes. that's what the 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 mm-hmm. prosecutor said very first. I'm not gonna give you any evidence. But we don't need it. But we don't need it. You know, like, how is that even a thing? Yeah, how, you I mean, immediately then. I would think in a like any kind of I, we got this right, and not only that, but like I feel like it should have been thrown out right there. If you don't have any evidence, but they then, have, but they have the most unreliable evidence. Right. They have something that is more dangerous than having real evidence mm-hmm. because it's fallible. Mm-hmm. They have eyewitness, mm-hmm. which watch a true crime documentary, any, any listen true to a crime. listen to a podcast once in your life. There is almost no such thing as a reliable witness. No. You know? No. Like, there are certain situations when it benefits the community or mm-hmm. the, 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 the law enforcement slash governmental slash judicial community, they, they only listen to it when they want to, mm-hmm. which is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but anyway, so you're sitting there and, and you know there's no witnesses that saw me because I wasn't there. Right. There's no physical evidence that I was there because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no pictures and there's no nothing. So I feel like I'd be going into there going, finally, after four fucking years or however, 18 months, four years after the incident, 18 months in jail, 
now I got, I, I'm getting out of here, mm-hmm. you know, but ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, that is not what happened. Nope. <laughs> Even though, like Lauren said, they said up front, there's no physical evidence. There's, pl- and, and there's plenty of footage from the detectives <laughs> during yeah. the interrogations Spoon feeding Chuck Erickson the details. Mm-hmm. So you would think a competent or even a somewhat competent attorney is going to be able to get in front of that judge and that jury and say, here's why this is bullshit, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Right. Look. Right. You know, and, and here we go. Even though but Chuck gets up on the stand. All right. Chuck, the one who had the dream. Mm-hmm. He starts talking about how he has all these memories that come up when he sees the news reports and whatnot, right? And that all of a sudden he's this expert witness. Mm-hmm. He can tell you how what time it happened. He can tell you how yeah, he it's hit no the longer guy. Fuzzy. It's no longer a blur. He's got mm-hmm. all the details ironed out. And he came up behind, and the guy puts his hands up, you know, and turns around, and then Ryan gets behind him and pulls up on the belt. And like, hold on a second. When we go back two years ago, Mm -hmm. which you weren't fresh off of this quote unquote incident. So, you know, a lot of times when they, when they talk to a witness directly after an incident, it's fuzzy because Mm -hmm. you're in shock that something just happened. So a lot of times that's where people get into trouble because they say something when they're in the, in shock Mm -hmm. because they didn't ask for a lawyer who told them, we're going to give you a night's rest and a meal and a meal Wait. before before you say anything because if you say something now and then change your story later that's mm-hmm. going to look real bad on us. Right. So that's not even what happened. This was 2 years after the incident that he gave his original one when it was blurry and now 2 years later now it's everything's all clear. crystal clear. Mm-hmm. Well, and it just so happens that his crystal clear memories fit exactly to what those detectives were spoon feeding him. So yep. So um but he says that He's 100% certain that he and Ryan were the ones to kill Heitholt. Here's uh, a part of the trial. What happened next? And I, I came around to Ryan's right, from behind him and to his right. And he was down here and he had a belt. And he had his, he had his foot on his back, on the victim's back. And he was pulling up on the belt. You know, I told you before I had no interest in putting anybody that didn't do it in jail. No, I guess it's never too late. <laughs> Tell us now if it was all a dream. I did this. He did this. I didn't dream anything. Why did you plead guilty? Because I am guilty. The, the, the objection is overruled. You may answer the question. Because I am guilty. I'm 100% certain that me and Ryan Ferguson committed this crime. And when you pled guilty, sir, what was your level of certainty about your involvement and Ryan Ferguson's involvement in this murder? It was 100%. Your witness, I don't have any questions. Your witness, I don't have any further questions. Mm-hmm, that, I hate that guy. Fuck you, Kevin Crane. Seriously. Judge, I better be careful. I shouldn't oh, say judge. that because he might come and get me. But Yeah, probably not. You know, Stay out of Missouri. <laughs> do you th- Yeah. Do you think... This is when I want to kind of get to start talking about. So you just spent 18 months in jail Mm -hmm. and you're hearing your former friend Mm -hmm. give details like this and talk about the things that you did. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a possibility that you start to question your own, your, your own memories, your own, you know, because I can understand first when, when, so a little bit later we talk about how, uh, you know, Chuck was involved in things like Adderall with alcohol and cocaine mm-hmm. and things and how he was getting blurry and black and how we didn't really hear that Ryan was doing those things. No. Um, and I got, you know, you know, there's certain situations in just normal life where, you know, for example, you and I, we grew up together. So we have the oldest memories we have are right. with each other. So yeah. you'll say something like, do you remember when we went to this person's house or to, you know, to dad's house and we, we watched this thing and mm-hmm. I'm like, not really. And then you start talking about it and maybe some memories start coming back. Maybe a memory. So those memories are fuzzy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So I feel like there's times when you could be feeding me Whatever. Yeah. And why would I think? And I, well, that seems like something that would happen. Right. That seems like something that, you know, so 
who am I to, you know, and I hear you tell this story again and again and again. And then all of a sudden I'm going, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. there's there's almost well, a, a I, social experiment that could happen there. Like, and I think it has. I think people well, have I, done those, you know, experiments to, for sure. to to check those things. Well, and but, I feel like we do that to ourselves too. We like oh, yeah. create memories. We we lie to ourselves about mm-hmm. you know things that we want to forget, mm-hmm. things that we don't want to remember anymore. We kind of block out and then our it no brains longer, are super powerful. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And and yeah, and then all of a sudden it's not a memory. Like you blacked it out, like, and then something like, brings yep. it back, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I think that's probably what he was attributing this to was, um, you know, those those things came back to me, or whatever. well, and like for somebody who has been on some of those medications, like been mm-hmm. actually prescribed some of those yep. medications and had a few drinks on them as well, um, I can understand mm-hmm. how you because there's there's been plenty of nights that. You know, I had a few drinks while taking some medication mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't have been, have been drinking on. Right. And the next day, I, man, anything could have happened. You could have told me anything and I would have never had any idea. Right. But you probably wouldn't jump to the, I probably, I probably killed, killed the guy. guy on the news. It was <laughs> yeah, probably no. me. Yeah, absolutely not. You know, after, after Chuck Erickson gets up and says, I'm 100% certain that, that Ryan and I did this, Ferguson's quote-unquote shit-hot attorney gets up. This guy just starts right in front of everybody screwing the pooch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he is a shit show. This completely. guy, I mean, he's getting his words twisted up. He's losing his train of thought. He doesn't have the map set up correctly. He doesn't that have any- That blew my mind, he the map yeah, thing. Yeah, he doesn't- He's not calling the right witnesses. He's not asking the right questions. He is not pre- presenting the right evidence. He's letting people get off the stand without having asked them very pertinent questions <laughs> yes. about what was going on. Then they don't even make sure that the audio visual in the, so the, the one piece of evidence that they have that can be powerful enough to show that everything Ryan or everything Chuck Erickson just said was fabricated by mm-hmm. these detectives. Right. And they probably fed him all of it. And probably by Crane when he prepped him for his his time on the stand, mm-hmm. which you would do to your witness, right? You should prep them before they get on the stand. You couldn't hear it. The audiovisual was screwed up that the jury they couldn't couldn't see, couldn't see it or hear it. It was on the other side of the room. Uh, terrible audio. Bill Ferguson, uh Ryan's dad, says it I mean, he said it was painful to watch. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine How not wanting to embarrassing. I can't imagine not I can't imagine not wanting to stand up and just be like, hey, clown. Right. Get your shit You're fucking together. this up. Right. We have a, a almost a, a, a cut and dry- A slam dunk. Yes. It should be. And you are screwing it up. And, and I wonder, since he, because uh, Bill Ferguson even said, like, this guy was supposed to be one of the greats. Mm-hmm. I wonder if he thought- this is a slam dunk. There's no way. Right. There's no way I'm He just I'm didn't even prepare. One. He almost didn't even prepare for it. Mm-hmm. He's going, we don't really have to we do that much to. work because- There's no evidence. Right. He was he was very, wrong. very wrong. Yeah. So not only is Rogers, who is this fucking clown of a, an attorney, is he being a dingbat, but Kevin fucking Crane, who's the prosecutor, was on his game, his evil little fucking game, Right. He was hammering these witnesses, intimidating them, prepping them with false truths, allowing them to lie on the stand, which if we're to believe everything that this shows, okay, that's me with the understanding that this was a a clearly biased documentary, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But the way I'm looking at it, I'm going, he is wrong for this, Mm -hmm. right? So then as a last ditch effort, which nobody knew was coming, Rogers, the dingbat attorney, he puts Ryan up on the stand. Oh my God. Which they were explaining is usually a last ditch effort. They didn't prepare him. Uh, he was just set up for failure, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 Crane jumped on that like a vulture. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm gonna pick him apart. I'm gonna yep. get him to lose his temper. Um, here's a clip from uh, the interrogation, or not the interrogation, but when when Ryan was on the stand. Uh, they told me 
that I was being arrested for a homicide. And what went through your mind at that point? I mean, I knew I had never hurt anyone, so I wasn't really too worried about it. Ryan Ferguson, who took the stand, did not, did not show a lot of passion. I believe you testified on direct. You thought Chuck was an odd man. Yes. You think that's funny? I think he's an odd man, yes. You think that's funny? It's not funny. Okay. Just I just thought you were smiling. Really. I thought you thought it was funny. No, it's not a funny. Okay. Laugh. Well, I mean, it, this is America. If you want to laugh, you can. No, it's not it's a laugh. Such an asshole. I just felt Crane was beating up on him, taking advantage of him and just hammering away at nothing, just hammering away, hammering. And he was trying to get Ryan to lose his temper. He was saying and doing everything he could possibly do to get Ryan to lose control, to lose his temper, and Ryan wouldn't do it. I was, I was pretty upset over that. And I said, he is a bully. He is a bully, and that's my son, and I take that personally. I never thought I'd be arrested for a crime I didn't commit. Would you? Would you believe you'd be arrested for a crime you didn't commit? I didn't commit one. Neither did I. Why? Does the state? Good job, Ryan. Is this Ryan. I mean, I don't know how he kept his cool. Me honestly, neither. Because I would have been flying off the handle. I would have wanted to jump over that stand and and. And if I'm his dad, I would have oh. wanted to beat the shit out of that man. The, not just. It's a thousand times worse because he's an attorney and he's trying to put you in prison and win this case, right? Right. Mm-hmm. It's a thousand times worse. But just in normal conversation, when when someone goes, "Was that funny?" You laugh. <laughs> Was that funny? Because I I don't think it's America. You can laugh if you want, but it's like you it's got, very threatening. You it's gaslighting, good. intimidating yeah. son mm-hmm. of a bitch. Like yeah. back the fuck off. Right. Because I'm supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. I know. That it's your job to prosecute me. Mm-hmm. It is not your job to bully me mm-hmm. into making a confession or something like that. Something I didn't do. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that got my it got my blood boiling hearing him do that again Agreed. just now. Yeah. Oh. Well, and it kind of is funny. <laughs> like, it is. He's an odd guy. Like it, that's a yeah, weird thing I to said say. It. I yeah. said that, and it's fucking weird. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And. I feel like I want to go, yeah, it is kind of funny. You just asked me if this dude's an odd duck. Like, <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I said it. Yeah. <laughs> he is weird. Oh, like, he's a shit. weirdo. Yeah. So after that, the trial's over. Jury goes into deliberation, and we get a news report. Uh, beep, 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 Showing that the closing statements... It, it, so the news report goes into some of the closing statements by the attorneys. Rogers, who's Ferguson's dumbass attorney, sounds like a last lackluster shithead. He's like, it's it's very clear, ladies and gentlemen, the jury that Ryan, his name's Ryan, right? right. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> you know? he's like calls him Chuck on accident. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did. He, he did. He even, one of them did. I can't remember who it, it was. It was Rogers. He mm-hmm. said. He said. Uh, Erickson Mr. Or Ferguson. Mi- Mr. And Erickson. He's like, he's like, that's Mr. Ferguson. You're like, like oh, oh, shit. Now I look like an ass. And then he's hat. sitting there like, lost his train of thought. Anyway, and then Crane, the prosecution, he's super passionate and aggressive going mm-hmm. like, you know, this boy killed this man, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. <laughs> that hurt. And I didn't oh, bring wow. any water down here. Some beer? No. <laughs> Ryan's convicted of murder. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's sentenced to 30 years for murder. On top of that, they also gave him another 10 years for robbery. I mean, <laughs> how do you do you I mean, how do you not just like unload everything in your bowels into I, your, I don't into know. your into your pants? Whether you're his dad, whether you're his attorney, whether mm-hmm. you're his... I mean, his attorney's still getting paid. Right. <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. You shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know what else to say. I mean, you, you're you you're sitting there watching, or you just found out that you're going to go to prison for 40 years. Mm-hmm. 40 years. And unless somebody does something, somebody not me, mm-hmm. does something... I'm screwed. I'm I just have to sit here. I'm spending 40 years. I'm going to be an old guy when I get out. My parents are going to be dead. Yep. 
I'm going to be old. <laughs> you know, I'm going to miss skills. everything. I, I, I've, I was a teenager when I came in here. Right. So I'm not going to have yep. any kind of real life experience about anything. Nope. You know, of course, Bill Ferguson, the hero that he is, he, um, despite his frustration and sadness, he goes out and he, you know, well, first of all, he does say, I, 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 this is my son and I believe that he's innocent. And he goes outside and he quotes John Paul Jones to the press and he says, we've just begun to fight. And he goes into years of walking the crime scene, doing crime scene tours, going over evidence, all while we're watching Ryan describe the shittiness of prison. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a story in parental tenacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know, the the fortitude to continue to push and push and push. Um, and he did say, you know, which I can understand this, doing nothing isn't an option. Mm -hmm. Not just because I got to do it for Ryan, but for my own sanity. Yeah. I can't just sit and do nothing. I ha Even if all I'm doing is rewalking re the crime scenes, mm -hmm. Or talking to people that I've talked to 8 million times right, already. Right. Um, the years go on. Technology and social media start to get a little more popular. Bill puts up free Ryan Ferguson web pages. Um, they're starting to get some traction on this movement. And, you know, people who are hearing the story and watching the newsreels and, you know, he's going through with, you know, videos, putting up videos and, and uh, you know, interviews and things like that going, look, this is why my son's not guilty. And, mm -hmm. you know, let's get attention to this. He starts getting a lot of attention and this gets the attention of an original witness. Now we didn't really talk about the original witnesses. And I, I think I kind of missed that in my notes here because so a woman named Shauna mm -hmm. and a man named Jerry. Both of them were janitors at the Tribune. Both of them had said that they saw the they saw a commotion. They saw mm -hmm. two white boys, men, at this scene when this happened. Okay, Shauna had even made a uh, a, a sketch with a police sketch artist um, of what this person looked like and. It was a pretty typical white it guy. It was a white guy. You know, sketch. Um, which, unfortunately, both Chuck and Ryan kind of fall into that mm -hmm. that demographic, right? Mm -hmm. And which, you know, happens countless times uh, across our country, I'm sure. Oh, sure, yeah. But Shauna, she got up and she said, basically just, yeah, I saw this guy that I drew and here he is, right? She wasn't asked any questions. She wasn't asked to point out if if that person's in the courtroom, nothing like that. She was allowed that was to infuriating get infuriating to yeah, me. She was just allowed to get off the stand. Well, and they said that like um dumbass attorney mm -hmm. Rogers didn't want to ask her if she saw because normally right. the prosecution would ask her that and she would point to right. Ryan, but he didn't. But he ask didn't her. ask her. Meaning, he probably knows. he knows that she's not going to point to him, right? But dumbass didn't right. want to do it just in case she did, right? Like because it, that, it was unpredictable. She he, didn't, he didn't know who he just what stepped, he was going to yep, do. Yep, and and she. But says, in hindsight, she he should have asked that because right she might have said not. It's definitely He's not, not that guy. Yeah, <laughs> she may have just been waiting for an option right. to be able to say that. But when she so she gets, she finds the free Ryan Ferguson websites and things like that, and reaches out to Bill, and they meet up, and she says, "I was intimidated by Crane." He basically, when he talked to me, made me feel like I was in trouble, made me feel like I was going to do something wrong. So I was afraid, and and I was telling myself and and what whatever that I'm just going to answer the questions that were asked me. I'm not offering any more information. I'm not doing anything. Like, I'm just going to answer these questions and get off the stand and go mm -hmm. home, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she straight up tells Bill, it was not Ryan that I saw there. If anything, my picture looked more like Chuck Erickson, but it wasn't him either. Mm -mm. And I was never asked 
to do that in trial, but I have paperwork. There's paperwork in the evi- in the in the uh, interrogation, you know, documentation documentation that I told Crane it's it not was them. not Ryan Ferguson and Chuck Erickson. Mm-mm. That is not the person I saw. But of course, that never came to light. And of course, well, and this asshole Rogers. Trump. Yeah, yeah, that's the other one. But and of course, Rogers never brought it up either. He should have seen that evidence and go, "Excuse me, ma'am, I have this." evidence here that mm-hmm. says that you told prosecutor crane that it was not ryan ferguson mm-hmm. is this your your right. thing okay that's potential case closed yeah or that at the very least that's Throw potential out. to make the jury question go, go, more. go oh it wasn't him then right the other one that i didn't mention was jerry trump mm-hmm. so <sighs> convicted child molester Jerry Trump. Piece he's, of shit. he's working. Yeah, he's working as a janitor at the Tribune, right? He gets told by Crane. Well, okay, his story is basically my wife, I was incarcerated for the child molestation case or whatever it was. My wife sends me a a uh, newspaper that when I open it up, I see the pictures of Ryan and and Chuck, and I say, those are the kids who were in the who who were in at the Tribune, and I say that before I ever even saw the the headline that said that they were that that's what they were for. It's just right? so too perfect. It's too perfect, and and they of course ask him, "Is that person in this room right now?" He points directly at Ryan Ferguson and says, "That is the Ryan Ferguson is the one who I saw there." Well, you know that's like a slam dunk, like oh shit, you know. Mm-hmm. And Ryan's like, "Oh well, that sucks because I wasn't there," and you know he's saying he saw me. So we'll get into that a little. Uh, we'll get into how that plays out here in a second. But as Bill's going through, he meets up with with Shauna. She tells him, "I told P- Prosecutor Crane that I that it was not Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, I was intimidated. All that. He was also doing more investigation work. Like he would go to the stoplight. So one of the things that Chuck Erickson said, there's a lot of information here. This is, is gonna this is gonna get long, but that's all right. One of the things that Chuck Erickson said was that he had come to a an intersection on whatever and whatever street, and he saw a guy that they know, both Ryan and he know, named Dallas Mallory. He went over to Dallas's car, who was stopped at this stoplight. They they talked for a minute, and then they went on about their way. Well, this is a a a witness that they should have talked to. Mm-hmm. Nobody brought Dallas Mallory to the stand. Of course not. No one talked to him. So Bill goes and finds him. But before that, I'm sorry. Let me let me not go there yet. Um, he's there at night. He yeah, he's at the intersection mm-hmm. at night, and he's going. This is the intersection that you know whatever. And he notices that the lights flashing yellow, mm-hmm. and it started flashing yellow at like. One in the morning. Right. Well, the murder and all this stuff didn't happen until like two something in the morning. He's like, so what, Who's that, what that means at a yellow is flashing light? someone, no one. he would have never stopped at the yellow flashing light. Nope. So they they also never got uh, Mallory's statement. So they're questioning why a bunch of people weren't brought forward that could have changed this jury's decision, like mm-hmm. Dallas Mallory. They found a lot of good evidence after three years of Ryan sitting in prison and they file an appeal. Mm-hmm. Um with a new lawyer who seems like she's pretty good. They have Shauna come and, mm-hmm. and t- retake the stand and give, and, and Dallas comes, takes mm-hmm. the stand saying, both saying that Ryan and Chuck weren't even there. Shauna says, I didn't, th- they were not the people that I saw. And I, and I told prosecutor crane that, okay. Dallas says, I was not there. I couldn't have been there. I had a DWI. I didn't, uh, have, a I didn't have a license. I didn't have a, a car. I, you know, I didn't, I, I couldn't have been there. Yet, somehow, the judge denies their appeal for another trial, right? Mm-hmm. He claims that the witnesses have no credibility, which is bullshit. How did they have cre- credibility the first time and not the second time? Um, everyone's pretty sure at this point that they're just protecting the verdict. Mm-hmm. Why would they need to protect the verdict? So they don't have to put their foot in their fucking mouth. Right. Like, what does it do? My 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 curiosity was piqued, and I have my theories. But what does it do to a system? 
that doesn't protect itself. Right. Right. Because in theory, this system, this justice system is supposed to be the end all be all. It's an unbiased, it's a, it's a, you know, innocent until proven. It's, it's essentially in theory, a perfect way to try to prove and convict, uh, prove uh, uh, or disprove, mm-hmm. and then convict, right? Mm-hmm. And then punish. Mm-hmm. So what does it do to a system that will overturn something like this? Well, it takes away all of its credibility. Yep. And so these judges who are in there forever, they protect each other. Mm-hmm. They protect the attorneys. They protect the the juries, the 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 convictions, and all that because a partially because it's a good old boys club, mm-hmm. but also because it probably starts to raise a lot of questions ab- about the um, how trustworthy this system can be. Mm-hmm. You know, if if what's getting turned over every time, if they well, start picking it apart, they're going to see the corruption, right? And how far does that go? Right. How many cases get picked apart? Does anyone ever truly have to serve what they are, you know, which in my case, if you're doing the best you can, you want people to pick it apart. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put you in prison for the rest of your life for something you didn't really do. Absolutely now, not. if you look like, when I see all the evidence and it looks like there is a, a good chance that you did this, I want someone to come show me why. Yeah. Even if that's 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. Show me why I was wrong, right? Because I went off the yeah, best that I could. The, yeah, I went off the best well, evidence like, that I could. So I don't, I don't feel like anyone's really blaming anybody for making the wrong decision. It's just the way it was presented. presented. Yep, was it's not the decision that was made. It was who. Pre- it was how people it was presented how it was the presented. information. Presented. Yeah. Right. Yep. So Ryan goes back to prison again. Um, do we real quick? Do yeah. we What What year are we in right now? Uh. Do you know? Yeah, let's see. Like when he, when they had their appeal or whatever. Because this you know, is I, with I don't remember. Kathleen Zellner, right? Not yet. No? No. Nope. Oh, okay. This was that the uh, their first appeal before they got Kathleen Zellner involved. Okay. Um, they had, they, they didn't really focus on her. His attorney was just another district attorney. I was going to say, I don't remember there being another attorney yeah. in there. Yeah. It was the, it was the one between Rogers and Zellner where. Okay. Um, so there was a second one. I didn't know that. Yeah. I yep. thought there was only two. So there I don't even think there. they ever said her name. It was just yeah, a, she did fine. Right. It wasn't her fault. Right. That, you know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but Ryan goes back to prison and. Through the hard work of Bill Ferguson again, the hero, mm-hmm. as well as a girl that uh, they talked about Ryan was actually talking to while he was in prison, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was like emails, letters, something like Probably, that. I don't know. Um, but the family got in touch with a hotshot attorney named Kathleen Zellner. Man, I love her so much. Yeah. Hashtag girl boss. <laughs> hashtag girl boss. Yeah. That's why I wanted to know what year this was because Kathleen Zellner. To me, anyway, the way I know her making is from a murderer. making a murder, right? Which was from two thousand five, two thousand eight. This was so before that. This this was before that. Yes. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. So th- this was. Um, so she. I looked it up because I I have here that she was that the, what she was known for was this the case, the Brandon Dassey case. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Stephen Avery or whatever. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'm pretty sure that this was all. Before I wondered that. if it like overlapped a little because the yeah. years are very, very close. They are, yeah. Um, but anyway, she she's a badass, mm-hmm. no nonsense attitude, and viciousness of her wanting to get in, innocent people let go. Mm-hmm. Um, the person you want on your team if you're if you're a innocent. thousand percent. If I'm ever in this situation and somebody doesn't call Kathleen Zellner, I'm gonna be upset. Right, I know. <laughs> um, Zellner takes the case pro bono. She starts going hard as a motherfucker, ham, mm-hmm. uh, putting together all the information they needed. But Chuck Erickson sends Ryan Ferguson a little letter, right? This is the weirdest part of the, the movie. He sends him a letter, which is the first time they've communicated since the original you know, mm-hmm. deal in years. He tells him, have your attorney come see me. So, of course, Zellner gets on a plane and says, I'm going to see him. She's like, bet. Right. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go get his, because I guarantee he's here to, to overturn 
what he said, right? Mm -hmm. So she goes, and Erickson's completely changed his tune, but not exactly what she was thinking. He starts saying, Ryan didn't do anything. I did everything. Ryan was telling me not to do it, and I did everything. Um, Ryan was begging me not to do this, and I didn't. Well, no one expected that. And that really never comes back up. It's almost like she said, shut the cameras off, Mm -hmm. because neither of you did this. Right. The the goal here isn't for you to take all the blame, which this is showing that Chuck realizes, or is at least beginning to realize, that he wasn't right when he was saying all those years ago. He's starting mm-hmm. to to realize after eight years in prison at this point, but people don't even believe that he had anything to do with it, <laughs> you know? And yeah. so, which that, that was crazy. It was almost him just going like falling on his sword, essentially going, I don't want to screw up both of our lives. Mm-hmm. Like I already have. Mm-hmm. I want to, if I can just get if them to believe. This right. Yeah. I want to get them to believe that it was just me, even though I don't even believe that either of us necessarily did this anymore. It's such a weird thing. Like, I know why I don't why? know. Like if he would have just never called 911 in the first place, this never would have even, they, right. cause there's no evidence. Mm-mm. They wouldn't have pinned this on Mm-mm. them because there would have been they, no reason to. And they would have continued to look for who, and the actual who murder actually did it. Right. So Bill and, and Kathleen Zellner, um, start putting together a bunch more evidence uh, they get, they find Jerry Trump. So they get him, that, that janitor, uh, who pointed Ryan out as being at the murder scene, came back and said that he was lying. Mm-hmm. That basically he, they went and talked to his wife who said, I never sent him a newspaper. They got him to say, no, Crane set me up for mm-hmm. what exactly I was supposed to say. He told me I was supposed to have received it in prison. He had nothing to do with it. It was folded in such a way that that I God, saw so the calculated. pictures first. Um, and he was intimidated by Kevin fucking Crane because he didn't want to get into any more trouble because he was a convicted child molester. He was already in hot water. He mm-hmm. was already out of prison from that before. He didn't want to get this attorney, you know... Pissed at him. Upset with him right. because he's probably sitting there going... You really don't want any more heat here, right, buddy? Right. You know he can put you back in jail for right. something. We'll pin something on him. So they start to send Chuck Erickson a bunch of the documentation that proves he's been lied to and misled in the original interrogations. Uh, he couldn't have been involved, and Chuck starts to realize even more that he was misled. He says the state doesn't want honesty; they want to hear what they want to hear. Yep, and it's so true. Yeah. Um, do you ever? Do you ever feel like, um, did we already talk about that a little bit? What's that? It, what would happen if you were pressured by the police under duress like this? You know, I think. Do you think you'd break? <laughs> it's hard to know, obviously. I, it is hard to know. I would hope not. Mm-hmm. I would hope that I would stick to the, tr- you know, the truth. What I know to but be I my think, truth, yeah. But I think it, well, first of all, like we were talking about before, I would lawyer up immediately right. and not give you them do the chance. You not have to talk. <laughs> right. I would not give them to cha- the chance to to mm-hmm. bully me or coerce me at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, uh, regardless of, I mean, I know that, you know, you do that and people looking from the outside in look it's at it and say, say yeah. you know, um, well, she must be guilty. She's lawyering up immediately. It looks bad. I don't care. I don't care how it I looks. I don't care how it looks. I, I want to protect myself. Right. And same with like lie detector tests, where right. this didn't come in at all here, which right. is kind of weird, honestly. But I feel like it, it's weird, but yeah. It is weird. I'm glad but, it didn't. You know, I'm glad too, because right. you never know what could have mm-hmm. happened. But like, you know, I don't care how it's going to look to somebody watching this on the news. If they think I'm guilty, I don't care. It's, it's protecting myself to a point where... Nobody can br- come right. back on anything. Right. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. Mm-hmm. My ass is silent. Right. Until and I, have I think a lawyer. I think a big part of this too is how the police pick you up. Mm-hmm. It's it's all a tactic. Well, and how their they age. Pick- like I can't believe they were able to pick up 17 year old kid. Right. And interrogate him the well, way. And they probably walked him into that office. They didn't have him in cuffs. They didn't have you know. Yeah. It, he it, just thought. They uh, thought, let's clear this up we, real quick. We just need to talk to you. We're going to clear this up real quick. Do uh, you need a cup of coffee? You need a, you need a water or anything like that? Mm-hmm. You've got donuts right there if you need some. 
um, you know, we're just going to go into this room and we're going to, we're going to talk, we're going to get this cleared up. You know, mm-hmm. you got none. Yeah. If, if you got nothing to worry about, you got nothing to worry about. That's all tactic. That's all right. them going, you know, make you should, them feel comfortable. Yeah. Make them feel comfortable. Make them feel like they're not in trouble mm-hmm. because you know, you, you don't want them to lawyer up. You okay. want them to say something stupid so that you can cross a erase on the whiteboard, that case on your, mm-hmm. on your whiteboard. And yep. you know, it's all, if, if you think there probably isn't classes on classes, on books, on books, on, mm-hmm. you know, lectures of how to do these interrogation, exactly. you're wrong because there is. Yeah. And you know, but the, the, as soon as you're picked, I mean, on the drive there, go, just so you guys know, I'm not going to say anything unless I have a lawyer present. Right. I've watched way too many cr- true crime documentaries to to feel comfortable with that. And I don't know, like 17 year old me might not have done that. Right. It's hard to know. I mean, 42 yeah. year old me, yes. Yeah. But 17 year old yep. me probably wouldn't have even thought about mm-hmm. that. You know. Yep. So fast forward just a little bit. Ryan finally gets yet another appeal. This time. Erickson himself takes the stand again and he recants or yeah, recants everything he said before. Here's part of his testimony. At the time, I justified putting it on Ryan basically because I thought he was going to do it to me if he had the chance and I wanted to save my life. I thought it was the right thing to do for a long time. I did. And it, it was really, really hard for me to accept that I did the wrong thing. At that time, and I'm talking about 10, 30, and 31, um, were you using uh, drugs? Yeah, I've been taking a good amount of Adderall. I've been drinking, using cocaine. Do you have a recollection of leaving the club? I don't know what happened. Is it a correct statement that you remember uh, nothing uh, the rest of the night until you wake up the next morning? Yeah. When you testified that you remembered that you robbed and beat Kent Heidholt, was that testimony true or false? False. Is it true or false that you remembered Ryan Ferguson robbing and strangling Kent Heidholt? It's false. But he has a hard time ever remembering. He has a history of that. He would go to a party, he would drink, smoke, whatever, and then the next day not remember it. Just totally black out. But, but he's functioning. So that's what happened the night of the murder. He was functioning, but he has no idea what happened. So when the police gave him these false police reports and these false witness statements that he was down there committing a murder, he's thinking, yeah, I, I could have done that because I do things like that when I black out and just murder people, but he, he's destructive. And lo and behold, today, you now forget everything that happened after that until you woke up the next morning. Is that what your testimony is to this court? No, I didn't remember it when I woke up the next morning either. I blacked out before. And I don't tell you, man, you know what a blackout is? And I'm sure you blacked out before, so you know, maybe not. Maybe you don't drink at all, but. You through? Yeah, I guess. He yeah. is very smart. Yeah. and I hate that guy. Yeah, you through? Yeah. Oh. I, I didn't need a lecture, he said. Yeah. Or I didn't need a speech. I didn't need a speech. Oh, my like, God. It, I, I asked you to answer the, oh, my God. Lawyers can be brutal. Correct. Yeah. Um. I have a lot of respect for Ryan because shortly after this, he he says, you know, he he's got a lot of empathy for Chuck. He's mm-hmm. going, you know, this is the guy that's put you in jail, dude, for nothing. Years. Yeah, and he's going. He must have been abused. He was bullied. He was, you know, uh, I had a hard time of it. And you know, Ryan's got a lot of empathy for him. Mm-hmm. So Erickson gets back on. He recants everything he said. He goes, nope. Nope, I didn't. That wasn't true. Uh, Jerry Trump gets back on on the stand and completely denies having seen Ryan and he admits understanding that he could be charged with perjury, mm-hmm. um, that he lied during his original statement. One scene that was difficult to watch was when Jerry was on the stand and the lawyer asks him, do you want anything in return for changing Ugh. your thing? And he and Jerry said, said, yeah. I want forgiveness from Ryan and his family for, for, for you know, for doing, for this doing this. And Ryan just kind of looked at him and which I'm sure he's coached, like, don't make reactions. Right. Don't just, you know, just sit there. But, you know, I don't often, you know, feel any empathy for child molesters, but I'm, I'm going, he, it, it was, that clear. was the right response. It was. Yeah. That was a great response. Right. Yep. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah, I don't know if I, I mean, there isn't a better response than no. that. No. Yeah. It's like, yeah. All I want is some sort of forgiveness. I, I, 
I fucked, fucked up. up. Yeah. I did the wrong thing. Yep. And I could have made it right at the time or and, at I, least and I put chose my, not yeah, to. At least, at least said my piece here. Right. Not saying that what Jerry says went as the full truth, mm-hmm. but that what could have started a, a ball rolling, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And then one more witness is brought to the stand. Former district attorney, now judge, Kevin fucking Crane. I about vomited when uh, the judge asked Crane, how would you like to be addressed, sir? You know, oh Mis- Mr. Crane, Kevin, Judge Crane. And he's like, oh, it doesn't really matter. He's like, I'm going to refer to you as Judge Crane since you were a judge when I was you know, an attorney. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Oh, my God. He's already on his side. Right. He's already. He, oh, a thousand This percent. is not an unbiased judge at all. Nope. You know, They're be- buddies. Yeah. It's essentially, you know, he is his friend up there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And. Crane, of course, is denying everything about oh, him. Oh, and it's so cringy too. The way he's like, "Oh no, what, what do you no, what do you what mean?" Do you, I'm, like, I'm, I'm confused. Can you repeat the question? Right, like, like, he's being such a smug asshole. You know, he's being he's being you know accused of potentially leading or intimidating or fabricating, allowing people to lie under oath. Um, of course, he's denying all that because that would be the end of his career if he admitted oh, yeah. to that. Mm-hmm. Um, if this case over get, gets overturned because of that, mm-hmm. his, his career's over. Mm-hmm. Um, thankfully, I was thinking when I'm watching this, though, I'm going, thankfully, Crane actually comes across to everyone looking like a fucking douche. Yeah, Like he he's does. full of shit. He looks um, terrible. Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, and, and Ryan's actually... Got a little bit of a smile on his face going like, like you asshole. Yeah, yeah. Now I think this is funny. Right. Ask yeah. me again if yeah. I think Do I it's think funny. this is funny? I do. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zellner comes on and says, there's no other case in American history when both of the main witnesses, which was Trump and Erickson at the original trial, have admitted to lying on the stand during that trial. So they're pretty certain that they're at least going to get a retrial. At best... That, that's at least, that's at worst, mm-hmm. we get a, a, a retrial. At best, the charges are dropped and Ryan's set free. Mm-hmm. They go, this this is thrown out because this is clearly we don't have, you know, mm-hmm. what we need. But the judge didn't permit a retrial. Yet again, In they are turned down. Infuriating. I felt like throwing my laptop. He claims, the judge claims that Erickson was not a credible witness. Now, all of a sudden, he's not a credible right. witness. Man. Part of that, though, if you look, if you try to unbiased look at this and you go, this kid has told three different stories three different times. Mm-hmm. He's not credible. He's not credible. But he wasn't credible from the fucking from the beginning. beginning. Right. He also claimed that Jerry Trump's testimony never had any effect on the original decision anyway. Which is bullshit. So it was irrelevant. It has. That's of course bullshit. it did. It was part of the evidence. He pointed him out. He's the only one that pointed to Ryan and said, you were there. Ugh. So that's bullshit. But Zellner and all of us know that the judge was clearly just looking out for one of his own, protecting the verdict. And she says, I'm going to rip apart his credibility and all that. And, you know, girl boss. Yes. Um, they keep fighting. Bill goes basically on a rampage with the free Ryan Ferguson stuff. He puts <laughs> billboards up. He puts ads everywhere. He's canvassing with flyers and business cards. He's that got fucking a fucking wrap on his car. His car wrap is hilarious. Such a but cringy it's, photo. I but, would have been but, so embarrassed if I was You know Ryan. what, though? <laughs> you know what? It did, Dad, did, it did the do, work. Dad, do uh, what you, you do, do you. because, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's great. <laughs> the, even my favorite part, though, is when... So Kevin Crane, mm-hmm. Judge Kevin Crane, mm-hmm. is giving the commencement speech oh at the God. University <laughs> of Missouri, I believe. And they find this out and they're like, this motherfucker is the giving the commencement address to this graduating class. This guy who's a, a, a criminal, a criminal. Mm-hmm. He's doing this and he goes and gets an airplane <laughs> with a banner that says free Ryan Ferguson and flies it over the stadium, mm-hmm. which is so awesome. I love yeah, that so great. much. Um and he even he even looks into what it would take to you know he's going we're going to appeal this and appeal this and appeal this for and we're going to raise all the way up. Mm-hmm. I even looked into what it would take to get a uh, appeal at the world court above even the Supreme Court right. of the United States. Like we're going to go all the way up if we're we have going, to. We're doing. I'm not going to stop. Yep. <laughs> yep. So finally, after pushing and pushing for yet another appeal, and we'll kind of wrap this up sort of quick, but. Zellner is able to show 
that Crane hid evidence so strong that it could have changed the the jury's verdict, which is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So pretty much based on that fact alone, that she could show that he had evidence that was not brought forward that could have changed their their mind. Mm -hmm. Regardless of everything else, that is enough to throw this out. It's, it's, it's done. Done. They get a call. The uh, mom and dad, Bill and... This remember. is one of my favorite parts, too. You want to tell it? Oh, just when, when Kathleen calls and he's like, you know, he puts her on speaker and they're all like, she's like, it's done. It's over. They've, they've, yep. and the mom's like, what time do we go pick him up? And she goes, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? We're just go, put your shoes on. We're going right now. Yeah. We'll go sit out there for 24 hours if we have to. Until we, <laughs> yeah. I was like, does it matter? Right. <laughs> she's no like, no more just- trials, <laughs> no more appeals. Not mm-hmm. even another day of waiting for Ryan to get Today. out. They threw it out now and say, get that boy out of jail. Mm-hmm. 10, almost 10 full years mm-hmm. in prison. Ryan's going to be let out with all charges dropped. Now, I think there's probably some more red tape to that. I think mm-hmm. I think they did mention he's he was paroled out. Sure. He probably has to do something. There's probably something else. I don't know exactly, I'm not but it sure doesn't matter. He's he got he's out of he's out. Yep. Um, you know, cue the waterworks. Seriously. When, when I was watching that, I'm going, Can you imagine no. being Bill and his wife and Kathleen and uh all the people that cared about Ryan and you're going, wait, we're going now? Yeah, we're gonna go right to now. Pick him and up? I get to hug my son. Right. For the first time in Can ten years. Can you even imagine? No. Uh I like when so Bill walks out and he the press is there because they caught wind of it and they're mm-hmm. they're waiting for his comment and he, he says, Excuse me while I go get my son. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> get yeah. out of my way. We'll t- we're gonna have a press conference tomorrow. Yeah. But, but today, today- is all about me going and picking I'm, up my I'm son. going to get Ryan. So Ryan's out. But he lost Gosh, 10 years. That surprised the shit out of me, though. That he got out like that? Yes. Me too. Like, I really honestly I thought, thought at the a, end of this, it was going to be like, Ryan's still sitting in jail. Yeah. Go to freeryanferguson.com and, right. and, and sign and the petition us. or yeah. whatever. Yeah, however yeah. you can. I'm really glad that's not I'm, how this ended. I'm glad too, but I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised. The, the ending really, really surprised me. Right. There's a couple... Um, really sad parts about the ending of this mm-hmm. though. Um, probably, you know, I would say three that kind of, kind of stick out in my mind. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan's out, but he lost 10 years of his, his childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and he talks about being institutionalized. He says that he felt more peace in prison sometimes than he feels when he's out. And that's such a sad story from yeah. beginning to end. Like you spent some of your most formative years in a cell. Mm-hmm. in prison with different rules and different things to worry about and, and a di- different structure a different yes i mean <laughs> yeah and you know he's happy to be out it's what he wanted but there's some serious there's some serious um adjusting that needs to happen and he probably you know that that's what they call ptsd that's yes. the kind of thing that you take with you for the rest of your life mm-hmm. you know and you know so the next saddest part to this day, in 2023, mm-hmm. Judge Kevin fucking Crane is still a judge in the 13th Circuit in Missouri. Stay the fuck out of Missouri. Because that asshole. And he's <laughs> probably not the only one in our justice oh, no. system that's a done stuff like this. A thousand percent he's not. Yeah. So if you're in Missouri and you go to court and you see Judge Crane, um, I'm sorry. Hmm. Um, anyway. That's the terrible. last sad part... Um, is that the killer of Kent Heitholt was never caught. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's hoping that he or she is in prison for something else mm-hmm. or died or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I did read that there's speculation about who it really was, and um, but no convictions have been made. It, I think it's easy to forget through all of this. We're, we're listening to the story of Ryan Ferguson. The real victim, the first victim mm-hmm. is Kent Heitholt yeah. and his family and friends. And then Ryan and... You know, it's just such a sad story. Well, so ju- scary. The judicial system did a disservice to both Ryan and Kent. Yeah. Like that, that. Yes. It, <laughs> I don't know how to like yeah. express how like sad that is. Yeah. And 
and that's we talked about completely it completely failed. Right. Failure. From start to finish. Yep. And and that's what um, you know, not only failure, but criminal actions. Mm-hmm. You know, what Crane did and didn't do mm-hmm. is criminal. You know, there should be you I don't know what this looks like. I'm not, you know, claiming to be an expert in anything, but there when you have an incompetent or underprepared attorney, like that shouldn't even be allowed. No. That should have been, you know, you should be able to have a button that says, stop, pause yep. this, because I don't feel like I'm being properly represented. Mm-hmm. You know, now that would be abused, of course. It's a hard thing it to would. do. So, uh, you know, again, not an expert here. If you're an expert out there and you're sitting there, well, that wouldn't work because I know. Okay. But also the fact that there's no, that, and, and they even mentioned in, in this documentary, you're, you're able to do whatever you want to do to get that conviction because everything is based on wins Mm -hmm. and you're acting with immunity Mm -hmm. to any repercussions of what could happen if you, you know, it might be unconstitutional, but they basically proved that what Crane did was unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. We didn't even hear about if he got a slap on the wrist, let alone get his, his license taken away, his, his, you know, go to prison. Mm Mm-hmm. We talked about that in Central Park Five. The people that took, you know, 12 years away from those boys or whatever mm-hmm. should have to spend 12 years in prison. Right. Maybe not that extreme. <laughs> right. But, but it's an eye for an eye kind of mentality right. where it's like, like, Why how does you- it feel to you? Like, what if, what if we did live in a system or have a system like that right. where it was like, um, if I fuck like this it, up. Yes. Like if you, if the jury is told beforehand, like, or not even the jury, you know, anybody involved, whatever, right. like if this conviction comes back wrong, wh- however long this person s- spends in jail, that's what you, like you got to atone for that or whatever. Right. Jesus. Can you imagine how, how, how much, much more, more you people would, would be? think about things? Right. How how much more attention you would pay to well, the little details? Well, and probably the piece in there that, that would be the most impactful is the fact that we base our the the success of an attorney or a lawyer or a law firm or whatever on their wins, not on how they presented the truth. Mm-hmm. It's not the truth that they want to hear. Erickson said it. They want to hear what they want to hear. Well, and so, that's the thing. There wouldn't be such. I mean, it. It. There wouldn't be a such thing as like a defense attorney if that was the case, because nobody right. would want to be a defense attorney because you're lying through your fucking teeth, right? The whole time yeah, to try and get your person off. Exactly. And and your your goal, if 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 it was true that you were supposed to be in a, a blind and unbiased truth teller. Mm-hmm. We find the truth of this. Yeah, this person is here to advocate for this person. This person is here to advocate for this person. But that's why people like district attorneys and you know they they get you know lawyers get called scuzz bags and whatnot because mm-hmm. they're taking on cases where they can find loopholes. They can mm-hmm. you know, and that's so fucking wrong. It's weird. it's so wrong. And people get rich off of being good at. Lying. Fabricating. Yeah. Lying. Finding even if it's not an all out lie, it's it's a technicality. Finding a way to do it to where it's allowed. That you, who even me as your lawyer, mm-hmm. understands it's a good chance that you did what the fuck you're that they're accusing yeah. you of. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, you may have even told me mm-hmm. because of client pa- uh, client privilege or whatever. Yeah. And the confidentiality yeah. thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And but it's my job to to not send you to prison. That's mm-hmm. a win. Right. My job isn't to uphold justice in our society. It's no. to keep you from going to prison. So if I can find a way, well, this, 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 and this don't match up with this. And you know, you find some some legal jargon to get the whole thing thrown out and you walk the streets again. Mm-hmm. And I won. Right. But like society at, lost. To what cost? Right. right. Exactly. Oh. Oh. So at the end, it says that Since Chuck's, yeah, Chuck's up for parole in 2020. I checked and Chuck actually got out of prison in 2023. Wow. Um, he spent 20 years in prison for a crime that he didn't commit. But confessed to. <laughs> but confessed to. Yep. I mean, if that doesn't tell you, I mean, 
the f- the fact that you can even confess to something and they take you at your word and don't even have to have proof of that besides you saying I did it. Yeah, it's just I mean, getting that case off of their to do exactly. list. Exactly. Because, checking it and off. unfortunately, that's also to speak to the overwhelming amount of shit that the system has to yeah. do. If it takes four years for someone to get into a trial after their arrest, mm-hmm. that means they've got a lot of other trials to go mm-hmm. through. And it prob- was the pro- the, probably the way that they can get away with that is saying it was as speedy as we could do it. Right, it was we- the next available spot. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, how'd you feel after this one? Credits roll. Well, I felt good. Yeah. I, f- I felt like really, it, it, jo- it was a joy. I kind of felt very much like I kind of took on the feeling of mm-hmm. his parents. For you know sure. what I mean? Yep. Like thought of how, how relieved they mm-hmm. must have been and how. But then also, you know, when we were talking about um, uh, Ryan and how he was having a hard time fitting in back in so civilian sad. life. Like, <laughs> It's so sad. And yeah. it was like, I just don't really feel like I fit here. And mm-hmm. so that was kind of a punch in the gut. But other than yep. that, I felt really happy that yep. he was able, you know, that they were able to wrap it get up. him yeah. out of there. Yep. And to me, this is scarier, like I said, than any boogeyman, oh, any God, slasher, yes. any mugging, any, you know, home invasion, things like that. The system is scary as fuck because this mm-hmm. is a system that's supposed to protect the innocent. And it doesn't very, it does very, not. very often does not. Now that you've got the Zellners and the, you know, whatever, and, and, and hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. around the country and world that, that do care about that. But even then it, it could not go the way of truth. It right. could just be, you know, so scary. Well, and there's so many like innocent cases people that, yeah. in prison right 20, now. Over 20,000 in, innocent people in prison A right conservative now. number of 20,000. Yes. Insane. Mm-hmm. Which is why things like the Innocence Project and Well, and that's you know, what I was going to say. Even the Innocence Project like they have to be so picky about what what they mm-hmm. take on because yeah. all it would take is them letting yeah. one Fucking actual, it up one time yeah. and then all, all their of their credibility, credibility yep. is gone. Yep. And then they don't trust them or the judicial system. Right. But then how is that any different than than the credibility of all the lawyers that are fucking fucking anyway. Oh, they don't have any. That's right. the thing is that like the innocence project is like the last mm. ditch right effort because if you can't find yourself a good lawyer or if, you know Do if not. you've got a shit lo- like a if you got a really shit dealt a really shitty hand and mm. get get a fucking whatever that douchebag's name, name t- yeah. was yep. on the other side then yep. <laughs> It's scary. It's so scary. <laughs> Tired. Um, I okay. Know, same. Uh, this was a well-made documentary. The story was told very well. Not a ton of bells and whistles. Um, there were some cool, like charcoal animations oh, throughout yeah, this that were, cool. that were that helped to tell the story a little bit. Told in a nice timeline. I liked it. Wasn't like it didn't blow my socks off. The the you know how it was filmed or anything like that. But I don't think it needed. It didn't that. need. It didn't need it. Yep. Uh, it almost made it feel more real yeah. because it mm-hmm. seemed more like a yep a home video or something. You wanna you wanna rate this thing? We're we're running pretty pretty long yeah, here. Let's, okay, let's rate it. All right, so we've come to the time in our show where we need to rate this documentary with an official documentary rating. Each crew member scores the documentary on a scale of one to ten items with one being as bad as someone dreaming that you murdered someone and you having to go to prison for it, and 10 being as good as getting the first hug from your loved ones after spending nine unnecessary years in prison. The item that is used for scoring changes each week depending on the content of the documentary that we watched. This week, we'll be using the hero Bill Ferguson (laughs) as our rating item. So Let's start with Lauren. How many Bill Fergusons do you give Dream Slash Killer? I gave Dream Slash Killer seven Bill Fergusons. Seven whole Bill Fergusons. Yep. Any any comments as to why it rated right there for you? I just really enjoyed it. I I wasn't blown away by it, but it was a it was a feel good documentary, and I yeah I, I was it had my attention the whole time. You considered this a feel good documentary? Well, I. 
it had a happy ending. Okay. Is what Fair I, enough. Yep. You know, I, I feel like sometimes when it does go the way of like, yep. he's still sitting in prison and we need people it's to so sign It's so disappointing. Petition, it's disappointing. And I felt fulfilled, I guess, yes. after I, the I agree role. with that. Maybe not, heartwarming is not what I would say. <laughs> yeah. But you know it's what I mean. It's not a feel like, good documentary. No, but, but it, it, it made me feel good that, it, least, that we were able to get yes, him out. Yeah. I say it, we, because I was involved. Yeah, we clearly. Yeah. We're able to we get are him now. out. <laughs> um, the being able to put a little bow on the end of it mm-hmm. with at least we're not still sitting with Ryan in prison, right? You know, with and, Chuck and in prison, with, with Bill um, out there with the a wrap on his car and handing right. out flyers right. and that walking would be the crime scene, heartbreaking. Yes, yeah, more than it already was. Feel good was probably not the right word, but <laughs> no, it wasn't the right word. It was wrong. <laughs> it was definitely wrong. <laughs> I gave this six Bill Ferguson's. Um, I loved the story. It kept me engaged. It kept me, you know, I didn't love it. The love, love the story. I loved how they told it. It was compelling. It was a good documentary. It's a story that kept my attention. Um, mm-hmm. Again, nothing crazy with how it was put together. I mean, Lots of good work. Lots of, you know, it was, it wasn't the, there was some things in there that took me out of it just a little bit that we didn't even talk about. There was a couple scenes where they talked about Bill, uh, Bill and uh, Ryan's relationship and then Bill and his wife's relationship that I'm like, mm, didn't Probably really add couldn't. too much. You know, could have cut that out. (laughs) A 10 second piece of Bill and Ryan's relationship when they played basketball and how that related, you know, and even, even Ryan talking about, you know, getting respect in prison and his experience in prison, I didn't think that was really that necessary to the story. Not because I I don't care about it, but that's a different story. We're sitting here talking about this one. Mm -hmm. And it, those parts took me out of it just a little bit, which is why I gave it a six and not something higher. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not to take away. I recommend this to everybody. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think this was a a really fun watch. Mm -hmm. Um, Fun being a, you know, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) This was the most heartwarming Christmas. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. Watch it on Thanksgiving with yeah. your family. Um, Thanksgiving was months ago. Oh okay. yeah, I forgot. Jeez. Sometimes I forget that we're ahead in time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 2024. Oh geez. Um, and I don't know if we're in 2024 yet. We'll find out. We'll find out. So after averaging. All of the people in the room. Man, that was tough. The official documentary rating for Dream Killer is six and a half. Bill Ferguson's 6.5. <laughs> Thanks to all of our listeners for listening to TALK News this evening and for not giving up on us, for continuing to push for more appeals, for sending us $60 a week to spend on commissary. And for finding us the best lawyers around to plead our case. No Rogers, please. Um, (laughs) As always, thank you, Lauren. Um, Thank you, Jeff. Um. um, (laughs) I had fun. This was good. I did too. It was good. Um, Let's talk about next week's episode, shall we? Tell me about it. Next week, we're going back to court. That was an unintentional court to court, uh, court to court courting. Court, Court to court. This time, we're not bringing Kevin fucking Crane, though. Thank no, God. no, no, no. We're definitely bringing someone evil, though. Oh, who? We're bringing the devil himself. Oh, yes. We're He's going to take a look into the first and only time that demonic possession has officially been used as a defense in a murder trial in the United States. <laughs> we're going to be watching the documentary from 2023 called The Devil on Trial. Have you seen I'm on this, this one? one? No, I haven't. Yeah, you are I'm on this watch one. It. You need to watch it. I I'm think going uh, to. it's streaming on Netflix. Cool, so I you, got that. You love Netflix. I hate Netflix, I but know. I did break down and for this show. Yeah. Yes. Um, so go check out The Devil on Trial before next week's episode. Hopefully, that's a good one. I have it on good authority. We have a a pretty fun special guest joining us. I'm not going nice. to say who, just in case they are not able to make it happen. <laughs> um, but Hopefully that'll be cool. As I said at the beginning of the show, rate and review our podcast and all the stuff. If you've been listening this long, go to our social media and comment the word. Um, how about comment the word sweetie puss? 
Sweetie puss. <laughs> sweetie puss. Sweetie puss. If you comment the word sweetie puss on anything, you will get a shout out on one of our future episodes. Next week, join us as we reflect on our fears of the unknown, one documentary at a time, on behalf of Lauren. That's me. Matt and DJ in the booth and the entire documentary family. I'm your host, Jeff Kalaski. I want to thank you all for listening. I hope you keep your minds open and be kind to each other. Be nice, nice goddammit. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> Trivia. Okay, now we're going to do our secret trivia. So, which Kansas City... Oh. This is weird because it's which Kansas City, but it's which Kansas City <laughs> did Dennis Rader, the BTK killer, terrorize? Which Kansas... So is there multiple choice? Yeah. Okay. Wichita, Kansas City, Dodge City, or Topeka? My first instinct was Wichita, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know it either. Let's go with Wichita. Okay. You're awesome, it says. Yeah. Okay. How did son of Sam, David Berkowitz, finally get caught? Was it a traffic ticket? His ex-girlfriend called the police? He was pulled over by police for speeding or DNA evidence? Was it DNA? Son of Sam. Son of Sam was the one that shot people in their cars right i don't remember let's try dna nope it was a traffic ticket Fuck. you should have gone with the cars thing i know what college did jeffrey dahmer flunk out of <laughs> it's somewhere in wisconsin was it antioch ohio state university wright state university or ohio university he's from wisconsin wisconsin so what's Antioch? Is that in Wisconsin? Oh, you want to try it? Oh, sure. Nope, it was Ohio State. Fucking A. All right, number four. What city did Jack the Ripper terrorize? London. Is correct. Nice job. Whew. Gosh, my credibility was going down the toilet. What was Charles Manson's original sentence? Mama. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Uh, was it was <laughs> like it twenty five years to life, death penalty, life sentence with parole, life sentence with no parole? I think it's that one. Probably life with no parole. Mm -hmm. Nope, it's death penalty. Fuck. Shoot, we suck at this game. No, you got this one. What did John Wayne Gacy dress up as? Ooh, Pogo the clown. Well, it didn't even say his name. It just said a clown. Oh yeah, it's Pogo the clown. What vehicle was Ted Bundy driving when he kidnapped and murdered Kimberly Leach? It was like a, it was like a yellow Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's either a white van, <laughs> a minivan, a white VW Bug, or an orange VW Bug. Oh, it's one of the bugs, I think, because for some reason I, I remember on- It was a yellow Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's an orange Bug. Okay. Maybe it's white. I don't know. It was a white van. A white van? Yep. What? I swear to God, when one of the... Uh, then somebody lied to me. It was probably Marcus Parks. Marcus motherfucking Parks. <laughs> um, the serial killer Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs was based in part on which of the following murderers? I know this one. Was it Jeffrey Dahmer? No, it was John Wayne Gacy. Was it Paul Bernardo? Nope. Was it Ed Gein? Oh, Ed Gein, that's what or I Or was meant. it John Wayne Gacy? No, it was Ed Gein. You're right. It was Ed Gein. Number nine. We're going to do 10. Okay. Number nine. How did the BTK killer... Bind, torture, kill. ...sign his first letter to the newspaper? Oh, jeez. Was it in Guild, BTK? I hate Dennis Rader. Was it shamefully guilty? Was it guiltily yours, BTK? Or was it yours... Truly guiltily. He's so pretentious. Yeah, what a bitch. <laughs> um, for somebody wearing those fucking glasses. It's got to be guiltily yours, you BTK, think? doesn't it? Yeah, maybe. Should we try that one? Yeah, let's try it. Damn it, it was yours truly guiltily. 
That's so stupid. He's such an asshat. He's such a dingbat. <laughs> All right. What state was Ed Gein's base of operations? Was it Wisconsin, Indiana, Michigan, or Illinois? There was a, there's like a thrash hardcore band called Ed Gein. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's Illinois. You think it's Illinois? Mm-hmm. One second. Okay. It's Ed Gein. They're going to hit our... Uh, episode for copyright probably oh that's cool yep they're pretty cool i like it anyway uh so what did you want to try I indiana think no i think illinois it's, Illinois. it's wisconsin Shit. <laughs> i thought for sure that was not the right answer uh, well ed gein i guess equals all cheese i guess all of the serial killers are from wisconsin well yeah <laughs> it's all that cheese. dj hornacek andy hornacek Kenosha. Kenosha. <laughs> Kenosha, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> if Andy's listening to this, um, you gonna go with me or you gonna go with your ma? <laughs> He'll like that. <laughs> anyway, thanks everyone for listening to Secret Trivia. Thanks secret, for secret. Se- I've got a secret. Got a secret trivia. 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 Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>